Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a classic Hakka dish which is called Moi Choi Kao Yok. And it's basically a dish where uh, pork belly is layered in a bowl topped with some Moi Choi which is preserved vegetables, steamed and then turned upside down and served. So to begin, we'll need some pork belly. So here I'm using a little bit more than 800 grams because I just want to give myself some leeway to to trim it down later. So all you want to do is cut it in half so that it fits in your pot and then we're going to top it with water. You want the water to just cover the pork belly so that you're not losing a lot of flavor and we're going to allow this to simmer for about 30 minutes. So we're gonna bring this up to a boil, skim the surface to get rid of some of the scum that comes out from the pork and then you want to lower the heat and allow it to simmer for 30 minutes. Meanwhile, we're going to soak our moi choy. So for this, you just want to cover your dried preserved vegetables in a liberal amount of water. So this helps to get rid of some of the sand, some of the grit and also some of the salt. Because this moi choy has been preserved with lots of salt. So if you are confused about what this is, you can check on the packaging to see that it has these three Chinese words. Because the English description of this ingredient is always quite vague. So the pork belly is ready when you are able to poke through it with a chopstick. So transfer it to a colander. And what we're going to do is pour over some dark soy sauce. You want to do this while the pork is still hot. Because when the pork has fully cooled down, it will be unable to kind of absorb and take on colour. Then what we're going to do is poke it all over with a cake tester. You can also use a toothpick for this. So just basically any sharp implement that allows you to poke through the skin and the fat of the pork belly. You don't want to poke uh, the meat at all. So this helps the fat render out from the pork belly. So that is why when you eat this dish, it is not greasy, it doesn't feel heavy, even though it is fatty pork. So now that that's done, you can see that there's a lot of liquid that has come out from the pork. We were going to reserve this for later. Transfer your pork belly onto kitchen towels, skin side down, and we're just going to let it sit for another few minutes just for the excess moisture to come out of the pork belly. You want to pat it very well all over with more kitchen towels. And then once that is ready, place it in a wok or in a large saucepan and fill the pan with enough oil to come up the skin of the pork belly. So at this stage, we're going to deep fry uh, the skin of the pork belly to allow a lot of that fat to render. So we're going to cover this saucepan and just heat the oil in the pork belly up. So after a while, you'll start hearing really violent spluttering noises and it is quite scary. So for this reason, I really recommend using a lid that fits your saucepan or your wok well. And basically my advice here is to not panic and to not worry. Because this spluttering is because the oil is coming to temperature and uh, the moisture from the pork belly is coming out. So you just want to be really observant at this stage. You want to wait until the pork belly stops spluttering. So you'll hear a difference in the way that the oil is, is bubbling. So when you only hear bubbling noises and no spluttering, that's when it's safe to remove the lid and to flip your pork belly. As you can see, the pork skin looks rather dark, but that is completely normal because we've got the dark soy sauce on it. Um, so it does not taste burnt. All it is is caramelized dark soy sauce. So right now we're just going to quickly deep fry the pork belly on all sides. Um, you don't want this process to take very long. It should just take a few seconds. Because if you do this for a long time, your pork belly's texture will become really dry. So now transfer the pork belly into a bowl of cool water. And we're going to place it skin side down. And the reason for that is right now, the skin is very crunchy and really hard. And that's not what we want. We want, we want it to soften and become really nice and spongy so that you can soak up all of that marinade that we're going to be coating it in. So leave that aside and we're going to prepare our sauce. So this is basically some dark soy sauce for colour. And then we're adding some light soy sauce for savouriness, some five spice powder, 
some brown sugar, some fish sauce, some white pepper, some salt, some honey, as well as some chopped garlic. Now we're going to stir this together and set this aside. Now back to our moi toy. So now your vegetable would have rehydrated. You want to make sure that it's not too salty at this stage, so always remember to taste it. And uh, what we're doing right now is basically lifting it up from the water, transferring it to a colander. Just give the moi choy a quick rinse and then we're going to squeeze out all of that liquid. Now in a pan, we're going to heat some oil and fry up some chopped garlic until it's fragrant. Add your moi choy, and this is really why you squeeze out all that liquid from the moi choy. If the moi choy is wet, it is really quite dangerous because you're putting it in oil. Give that a quick stir, and it looks quite dry, so we're adding some um, of the reserved pork juices from when it was sitting on the colander, as well as two ladlefuls of pork broth. Now we're just going to season it lightly with some soy sauce and a pinch of salt and sugar. That's it. So now back to our pork belly. As you can see, the skin has transformed into something that is spongy, almost like sea cucumber. So you can take it out and place it on your chopping board. And what I'm doing now is completely optional. It's just for the aesthetics. So I'm just trimming uh, the pork belly so that it is more or less the same size, the two pieces, and uh, so that it looks a little bit more rectangular. And then just slice your pork belly into thin or thick slices, it's up to you. Some people like it really thin, but for me, um, I like a little bit more chew and a little bit more bite, so I'm going slightly thicker. As you can see, the pork belly at this point is really succulent and juicy. That's because it is just cooked. You're going to toss the pork belly with the sauce that we have made earlier. Just toss it really well, and then we're going to start layering it in our bowl. So you want a bowl that is just the right size for your pork belly. So some people like to place the pork perpendicular to the bowl, but I actually like to fan it out a little bit so that it looks better. So you're going to start creating a strip of pork across the center of the bowl. And then on the side, we're going to layer more slices. And then once the base of the bowl has been covered, you can then top the pork with um, the rest of the slices. You can even place the trim pork that you have cut out here because it's um, not going to affect the appearance of this dish. And at this point, um, I like to reserve one small slice of pork. I'll explain more later. So basically, we, we're going to cover the pork with our fried moi choy. You just want to level it out and really use your hands to compact everything so that uh, when you turn it out, it's not a mess. And then now we're going to pour over our leftover marinade from tossing the pork. And this is going to flavor both the pork and the moi choy. So once again, you want to compact the vegetables again. And then before you cover it, top it with the small piece of pork belly that we've saved earlier. So this is going to help us with the testing of the doneness of the pork later on. Cover the bowl and steam this until it reaches your preferred doneness. So I'm going to show you what I mean. So this is the pork um, after about one hour of pressure cooking. So you can see that it is not fork tender but it's definitely still really tender with a bite. So some people like this kind of texture for things like pong ba bao. But I personally prefer a softer, fork tender kind of texture. So I let it go for another one hour in my steamer. And you can see that it's way softer now. It is fork tender. So this is perfect for me. So what you're going to do now is cover the dish with your plate again and pour out all of the sauce and the liquid that has accumulated in your bowl. And we're going to bring this up to a boil before adding some cornstarch slurry. So what this does is um, thicken the sauce up into a really nice, glossy, um, thick liquid. Set that aside, and now we're going to prepare for the presentation of this dish. So just turn it upside down onto a bowl. You want to use a bowl because there's going to be juices, so you, you don't want to use a plate. So carefully remove the bowl 
and pour over the sauce that you have made earlier. So this dish is actually a perfect do-ahead dish. Uh, you can actually store uh, the pork before turning out in its bowl for a full day um, and that will help the flavours improve even more. I like to top this dish with some spring onion. You can also use coriander. And because this dish is so savoury and so umami packed, I like it best with something that is bland and simple like Teochew porridge. And I'm just going to show you how tender the pork is. It's really, you know, you can eat it with a spoon. So I hope you give this a go. And uh, hopefully this makes it onto your Chinese New Year family dinner table.